If you're frustrated with an annoyingly ringy snare that just sounds cheap and doesn't sound like what you hear on your favorite records, then I've got a great lesson in store for you today. Too many of us deal with a snare sound that we're not happy with, and it's hard to be creative and musically inspired when you don't like the sound of your instrument. Ultimately, this frustration leaves us asking, is my snare drum the problem or am I the problem? We'll actually answer this question today and I will share with you the simplest, quickest, most instant hack for actually getting rid of annoying snare ring so that you can play an instrument that sounds nice and that really inspires you. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so excited that you're hanging out with me today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians that others actually wanna to listen to and play with and have in their band. And we do this by teaching you the core fundamental skills that are most important and that get you the fastest results in the practice room. Today's gonna to be a lot of fun because I'm actually not just sharing with you one quick hack. Otherwise, this would be a five minute video and it actually wouldn't be that interesting and probably potentially not as helpful. I wanna help you out as much as I can here. So we're actually covering three methods for reducing ring. One of those methods is the cheat, the hack. But our first method is solve ringiness with tuning. We're gonna talk about how we can mess with the tuning to potentially get rid of the ringiness without even using any hacks. Method two is strike your drum like a pro and it will ring less talking about hitting it the right way. This makes a huge difference. This is really important. And then method number three is our cheat, the quick hack that makes any snare sound better. So I'm looking forward to diving into all of this with you. But first, if you are a beginner drummer today, I have a special gift for you in the description below. Most likely the two biggest challenges that you're facing as a beginner, brand new to the drums, are one, not really knowing what to practice, and two, not being able to play your favorite songs yet. Because if we're honest, we just, we want to get up and running and playing songs. So I want you to grab my free guide as your solution for this, 25 practical rock grooves and fills for the beginner drummer. What this does is it gives you that basic essential vocabulary of, hey, these are a bunch of great rock grooves you can use in almost every song, a bunch of great fills you can use. So now, okay, you've got the building blocks, you've got the basic vocabulary, so you can start speaking the language and really get up and running, feeling like a real drummer quickly. You now know what to practice and you can play your favorite songs quickly. So grab this guide, it's super cool. This has been helping out a bunch of students already, really valuable and it's yours, totally free. Check it out in the description below. All right, on with today's lesson. Method number one, solve ringiness with tuning. And tuning is always a great place to start, by the way, because we shouldn't just jump to, you know, throwing things on our drum, slapping stuff on them, or assuming that the drum is the problem, that something is wrong with the drum. A lot of times by retuning, by messing with the tuning, we can actually get the sound that we want. So that's why this is our first method that we've got to hit first. So if your snare drum is too ringy, meaning you've got a tone that just rings out, like you hit it and it goes doom, and you, you keep hearing that and it's just obnoxious, the quickest way to fix that with tuning is simply to tune higher. Listen to what this snare sounds like right here. This is tuned sort of medium high, and at this point, the ring is not really that annoying. However, the problem here is that we don't always want to tune higher. Uh, just because tuning higher is gonna fix the ringiness doesn't mean we should always be tuning higher, obviously, because there are a lot of great low tune snare sounds out there, especially on some of our favorite records. And so we're kind of left wondering, well, how did they make that low tune snare sound so good where it's not obnoxious and ringy, but it's also not totally dead? How do you find that balance? And so that's what we're gonna also get into here because we don't always wanna tune higher. How do we make a lower tune snare not be obnoxiously ringy? And that's what we're gonna get into because I'm gonna pull out my lower tune snare over here that's a deeper snare uh, instead of this one and you'll hear what I'm talking about. But basically, right now, we've got this snare tuned up high enough that we've gotten rid of the annoyingness of the ring. And it's not that the ring isn't there anymore, it's just that it's shorter. Because if you think about it, as a, as a head is tuned tighter, it's going to resonate for a shorter amount of time. If I hit my floor tom over here, it's gonna ring for a while. This is almost the same head that's on the snare. And pretty much, like this is the same size drum. Of course it's deeper, 14 inch floor tom, 14 inch snare, but the floor tom rings out for a long time. Why? Because it's tuned lower. And so those heads are going to keep going. This is obvious. So the, the, the flip side of this is if we tune our snare higher, we're going to be able to shorten that sound. And also when you've got the snare wires pressing against the underside head, that helps shorten it a little bit too. You hit a snare with the snares off, it's gonna ring a little bit more like a tom versus with the snares on. So we know that, okay, by tuning up a little bit, we can get rid of the ringiness, and by having a higher tuned snare sound, we can keep that full ringiness, the full richness of the tone, and it's not gonna be too obnoxious. 
One other thing we can do, because actually there's three things here we're talking about. So first thing was tuning up a little bit higher to shorten the ring. There's a second thing, there's also a third thing. So the second thing is loosen the snare wires. So if you've got them super tight, super tight, super short, the ring is kind of brought out a little bit more because it's not hidden by the sound of the snare buzz. Boom, boom. I don't think that's bad. But listen to if we loosen them. I'm gonna be a little bit too loose there, but if we go. I think that's a good spot. When you allow a little bit of that snare sizzle, the note length of the snare sizzle can actually help to mask the note length of the ring. And so what's interesting, as you tune a drum lower, you generally want to loosen the snares more to help match the actual note length of the drum. Versus when you're tuning higher, you can then shorten the snares, because it sounds weird to have a super high-tuned drum with long, loose snares. You generally want the length of the snare buzz to actually match the note length of the drum. So that's something else to keep in mind there, and you can loosen your snares a little bit to mask some of that ring. So what I want you to do, if, you're, if you have an annoying ring going on with your snare, and you feel like, you know, I'd, I'd be fine with it, being a little bit higher tuned, then just gradually tune up. It doesn't have to be much. You've got two tuning keys. Ideally, you've got two. It makes this quicker. Just do like quarter turns, not even much. Probably turn about that much, maybe like an eighth of a turn. Not much. A little bit can go a long way. Just eight to quarter turns, go all the way around until you've hit everything, and then just listen to it and ask yourself, okay, is the ring less annoying? This is subjective territory. What happens is as you tune, as you tune higher, that fundamental note that the drum creates gets higher and the overtones get more complex. And the more complex the overtones are, all the other high notes that are going on, the less of that fundamental tone you actually hear and notice. And so that's why the higher you tune it, the less annoying it sounds. So that's up to you to decide. You have to sit there and gradually tune your drum up and ask yourself, okay, how does this sound? Does it bother me? Is it okay? And always remember that in the context of actually playing, especially if you're playing on a stage, playing with a band, that ringiness is not gonna be heard by the audience. It's heard a lot more by you and by your snare mic. But any other mics out here that aren't super close to the drum probably are not gonna pick it up. So you really don't have to get super picky with this. So method one, tune higher to shorten the ring. That's basically what's been done to this drum. Method two, loosen the snare wires just a little bit. That'll help mask some of the ring. And then method three is detune a couple of lugs to choke the drum out. Now, we're not gonna do that with this drum because believe me, it's gonna sound terrible because this is a fairly high-tuned drum, medium high, and if I tune out a couple of lugs, it's gonna be really weird, it's gonna sound horrible. So, we're gonna go ahead and switch this out with my deeper drum. So, by the way, this right here is my Gretsch Maple 14 by five and a half snare. And what's cool, this thing can go as deep as I want it to go, it can go as high as I want it to go, but I have this other snare that's a 14 by six and a half. It's actually a pretty cheap PDP steel snare. And just because it's a little bit deeper, I let it be my dedicated deep snare. That way I'm not constantly retuning. So if I want a high, medium high snare, I just use this one. If I want a deep snare, I pull out this one right here, which also has the uh, controlled sound head thing and patch thing in the middle, which actually works really well. When you're trying to do a deep sound, I like the feel of this. If I'm tuning higher though, I don't like it. So just my opinion. All right, I'm gonna switch these out and we're gonna talk about how to deal with the ringiness of a low tune snare, because ultimately that's probably the biggest issue that a lot of us are dealing with. All right, now we're talking ringiness. <laughs> I love the feeling of hitting this drum though. It's tuned really low. You can hear how low it is. Boom, boom, boom. Got a little bit of snare buzz coming from the other snare down here. See if we can get rid of that. Just has this nice doom, doom kind of feel. I love a low tune snare. But odds are, if you're dealing with this crazy kind of ringiness, it's because you love a low tune snare too, and you've got your drum tune low enough that this is the kind of sound you're running into. Where not only are you hearing the doom, but you're hearing a couple of other higher tones that keep going, and also the snare wires are going It just doesn't sound great, and it's really hard to, you know, hear or see a possible way for this actually working well in a drum mix, even in a groove context. It just doesn't really work. So we know, okay, we've got to do something here. So what are our options with dealing with the crazy ringiness of a low tune snare? So staying here in our method one of solving ringiness with tuning, 
We could tune higher, but we know, okay, we don't want to tune higher because we want to keep things low. We can loosen the snare wires. Well, we've done that, and that's not really working because we've got the going on. So that third thing is detune a lug. So we can do this. You may have seen this trick before where you basically cut off the circulation of the drum. If you detune a lug suddenly, it gets a little bit lower, but the ringiness actually starts to lessen. Thing is, it's still there, and now the, the snares are just buzzing for miles. And really, we're having to detune a second lug about halfway. Finally, okay, now we're finally getting rid of some of that. And at this point, the problem with this method is that we're losing a lot of the tone here because, you know, the, the meat and the body of the low drum, what makes it so great, what makes you feel it in your chest, what's so awesome about it, is actually what's creating the ring, ironically. And so by getting rid of the ring, we're also losing some of that low end punch. So really, we don't want to do this. So we're going to bring these back up. You know, it's about where we had them. This drum is probably about finger tight. I could actually, yeah, it's about finger tight. If you just tune up the lugs with your fingers, that's about where this is at. And the bottom head is still fairly tight. I like to keep the bottom head sizzly enough. And also, by the way, I know this is somewhat of a tangent here because we're not really talking about snare tuning in depth in this lesson. But the reason why right now we hear the sizzle that just lasts and lasts down there is because I have that bottom head tuned pretty high. If you wanted to reduce that, you could tune the bottom head lower, but then you'll get less of a snare response. And I think the sound just isn't as good when you do that. It's up to you, you can play around with it, try it. But even when I have a, a snare drum tuned low, I like to keep the bottom head pretty tight so that I've got a nice bright snare response. Totally subjective, do what you want to. So we've kind of made it to the end of method one here of solving the ringiness with tuning to find out that we maybe can't really solve the ringiness entirely with tuning, unless we were to detune the bottom head and get the snare sizzle just right and then maybe detune a lug, but even then it's hard to really get it perfect. Hard to get exactly what we want. So I'll go ahead and tell you that method three, the quick hack is going to be our easiest shortcut for really making this work. But there's one thing that we gotta talk about before we get into that because method two, if you're not employing method two, then you're always gonna run into trouble with snare ringiness no matter what you do. So here's what we're getting into here. Method two, strike your drum like a pro and it will ring less. What do I mean by this? Hit your drum in the middle, that simple. Because if you're hitting your drum slightly off center, let's see if we can hear a difference with this drum. I know we can with the higher tune snare, but I'm gonna hit in the middle. By the way, I'm, I'm tightening the snares a little bit as I do this. You can hear how it doesn't actually really improve things much. There's still a lot of that sizzliness. And actually there's a sweet spot. So when, I know I keep throwing in these extra tidbits because I keep thinking of things, but I think this might be valuable to you. So when you're doing a low tuned snare sound, you definitely don't want to have the snares tuned too tightly. You'll notice there's a sweet spot. So as you're hitting it, suddenly you'll feel this beefiness, this low end that comes out when they get to a certain looseness because the snare wires are actually choking out a little bit of that low end from the drum. But as you loosen them, you start to allow for more of that resonance between the heads. And so you wanna find your sweet spot there. Yeah, I think this is our sweet spot. We just gotta shorten the tone. So, okay, that's what it sounds like if we're hitting in the middle. Now, if I hit slightly off center, Okay, now we're gonna A, B. First I'm gonna hit in the middle, and then off center. Middle, then off center. You can hear the difference, and actually the difference is even more drastic on that snare, because the controlled sound coated head actually gives you a little bit of forgiveness in that department, where you can be a little bit sloppy, when you have this thing here, and the sound is fairly consistent within like a two to three inch radius right here in the middle, versus without this, you have to be even more precise because if you're slightly off, you really start to hear a difference and you get less attack and more ringiness. So you could probably hear there, even with this, if I were you know, two inches off the center, very much ringiness, less attack, not really that full sound that we want. 
So what I recommend you do, you can flip your snares off if you want to, or if you've got ear protection or whatever on so it's not super loud, just sit there and hit your snare. Slow singles. And each time, see where the stick hits. You know, you can always see exactly where it hits because it kind of pauses, otherwise it's a blur, but you'll see, okay, like just now I hit like right here, I was a little bit below center. Okay, that was pretty close. So just do it over and over again and see if you can get really consistent and do that with each hand. Also, this sounds like a total amateur beginner cheat, but it's totally worth doing. And I do this a lot of times when I put a new head on my drum. Draw a circle exactly in the center. Just draw a little circle that's the size of a quarter in the middle of your drum. That way you've got a target to aim for when you put a new head on. Because when there's a new head, you're kind of just looking at the sea of white and it's hard to make sure you're actually hitting in the center. Versus if you have one of these controlled center head, controlled sound heads or power center reverse dot heads, it gives you a little bit of a guideline. And once you've played a bunch, you know, at this point, if I ever did draw a circle, I don't know, because it's all blurred out, but I can see from all my markings that, okay, the center is obviously right here. So an easy way to draw a circle in the middle, line your stick up with the lugs. So you've got the edge of stick with this lug, edge of stick with this lug, make a little pencil X right here, make a pencil line, basically. Do the same thing here, line, line. And so you've got a bunch of lines. They should all intersect at the same spot if you were precise. And then just sketch a little circle or put a quarter there, trace the quarter. It sounds silly, it sounds amateur, but don't think that you're above doing this if you're beyond a beginner drummer because I still do this and I think it's really helpful because it's so important that we play in the middle. That's why I say strike your drum like a pro. That's a big difference between a pro drummer versus an amateur drummer. The pro drummer is getting consistent sounding backbeats and that's what makes a groove feel great. An amateur drummer is all over the place and the snare is totally beat up and the toms are totally beat up. Most of the time, the reason why an amateur drummer just sounds amateur. Like picture you're at a music store and there's a kid over there banging on the drums. The reason why that kid banging on the drums doesn't sound as good as a professional is largely because a professional is hitting the drums in the middle and hitting the toms in the middle. That's huge. Practice doing that. That's a great thing to practice. Just sitting here and playing slow singles, hitting your snare in the middle, then doing alternating singles. Give yourself a little bit of space here. It's okay to be a little bit off if you're you know, playing like this. But stay as close to the middle as you can. Do the same with your toms. Give yourself an inch or two between your sticks on your toms. It can be nice to hit the toms slightly off center so you get a little bit more resonance. Totally up to you, but practice this level of precision. It goes such a long way and it will improve your snare sound so much. And that's why back in the beginning of the video, I, I mentioned how you know we're left wondering, is the problem my snare or is the problem me? It could be either, it could be both. And if the problem is you, this is why. It's as simple as I'm not hitting my snare in the middle. And so if you can fix that, improve yourself, improve your technique and your consistency and your steady dynamics, that's gonna go a really long way where you could hit a cheap snare and that cheap snare is gonna sound okay, honestly. But if you do everything we're talking about today, combined with this right here of being consistent, being precise, you're gonna be able to make any snare sound much more professional, even if it's not a black beauty, even if it's not some fancy $2,000 snare, you're gonna be able to make it work. All right. Time for the fun stuff, <laughs> what we've all been waiting for. I hope you've stuck with me and I hope you paid attention through these first two methods because these are very important and will help play into this third thing. If you've done everything up to this point, then this third method is just gonna be the icing on the cake to make sure that, hey, you've got a quick solution here and you can always make sure your snare sounds awesome. So method three, the cheat, the quick hack that makes any snare sound better. What I want you to have in your head here, this is kind of a, a truth of snare ringing. The problem is not the ringing, it's how long the ringing goes. We talked about that earlier with tuning higher. As you tune higher, you're shortening the ringing and the, you're hearing more complex high notes and so your ear doesn't really hear a doom kind of sound anymore. And so as you shorten that ringing, it becomes less undesirable and it actually might sound really nice. So we know that, okay, if we can just shorten the ringing, that's really all we've got to do. The goal is not to muffle the drum. The goal is not to choke it out. Detuning a lug is not ideal because then it gets super dead unless we want the super dead sound. We could throw the bandana over the drum if we want the super dead sound. But let's say we want some naturalness, we want some life to it. We want to preserve that tone, that beef, that meat that makes us feel the low tune snare in our chest. So all we need to do is shorten the ring. And the easiest way to do it is something like this. So here's the before. and the after. I love it because it's so easy, so dependable, 
so great, but I know, I know you're like, Steven, what is this thing? How do I get one? And this is one of the, the questions that I've gotten the most. I've seen it in comments, I've seen it in emails. And so if you've ever emailed me about it, hopefully you've gotten my autoresponder where the first thing in the FAQ in the autoresponder is explaining what the Jingly thing is because so many people ask about it. So this thing, it's some old cheap like bracelet, Jingly bracelet thing. And it was something that I actually used for a marimba piece that I played in college, a four mallet marimba piece. And it called for having like jingly stuff on your, on your wrist to help complement the sound. So it was actually all part of the piece. Long story short, that was where these originated. They, my percussion teacher had them and so I ended up using them a bunch. And at some point I learned the trick from my favorite drummer, Aaron Sterling. I can't take credit from this. Aaron Sterling, LA session drummer. Uh, great drummer. I love everything that he plays. He's a, been a huge inspiration for me and his playing style is much of what I strive for. And so definitely go check him out, Aaron Sterling. But he talks about this whole concept of, you know, I don't want to choke out the drum. I just want to shorten it. And so if I put a metallic object on the drum head, what ends up happening kind of on a micro level here, when I hit the drum, it bounces up, it hops up because that's what happens. The head vibrates. So this hops up. And in that microseconds of, of this hopping up, you get the full tone, the full resonance, all of that depth, every frequency is there. But then it lands and it shortens it, it stops it. What's interesting to keep in mind here is that all of that buzzy sizzliness down here, that's because the heads keep vibrating. If we choke out the top head, not, and again, choke out is not the right term here. If we shorten the resonance of the top head just with this, it also shortens the snare sizzle. And so actually I could bring the snares a little bit tighter. To taste, it all depends on you know, what we want, what song we're playing, what you like. But it's like magic because it's, it, it functions as a gate. We hit the drum, the gate opens, all the sound comes through, bam, the gate closes. And so that solves the problem. Now what's interesting here and the big problem with how we generally approach this whole concept of muffling is we reach for the gaff tape, we reach for the moon gel, we put our wallet on the drum, we put stuff on the drum, we put things on there that are fixed in place and that stay there and that are ultimately sucking the tone out of the drum. Now there's nothing wrong with that if that's the sound you want and that's what the song calls for and that's the, the snare sound that inspires you. But know that if you, if you have a wallet taped onto here, unless you attach it loosely where maybe the wallet can hop a little bit just like this, uh, but especially if you've got gaff tape, you've got moon gel, these things are stuck to the head and they're keeping that resonance, that, that tone from happening. And what happens if you're sucking out all the higher tone from a drum, you end up hearing that fundamental boom even more, which is not really gonna help our case. I've got a, a video from a couple years ago here on the channel that I'll link below in the, in the description to go check out where we talk about this in detail and I show you as I put moon gel on the drum, you start to hear more of the fundamental. So you hear how more moon gel does not actually get rid of what we wanna get rid of this kind of method gets rid of what we want to get rid of. So if you're wanting a deep, lower kind of snare sound, or even if you're tuning higher, but you want it to be very short, I highly recommend you find a metallic object. It does not have to be just like this. Honestly, the best substitute for this is a set of car keys. One time, uh, I have two of these. Uh, one of them actually stays on the snare on the house kit at my church, so it's there for me every Sunday. And then the other one is right here. One time, I think I, I had both of them on other snares or something. So I got to church and I didn't have it. And I like having a fairly low tuned snare at church playing worship music. And so I was like, oh no, the snare sounds awful without my jingly thing. What am I gonna do? Car keys, pulled out my car keys. I, I still have my old college lanyard attached to my car keys. So I taped the lanyard onto here. So the keys were resting right here. I tried to keep it kind of away from the mic just so that the sound guy wasn't hearing a whole bunch of keys jingling. Because uh, sometimes, yes, this can be picked up a little bit by the snare mic. It depends on how much of the snare mic is being used in the mix. But if you move it a little bit further away, it's fine. So I attached the car keys and that was it. Problem solved. Simple things like that work really well. Any kinds of like cheap jewelry you can find, like a necklace, a bracelet. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but the more hard and metallic it is, and the more surface area it can cover and you know, lots of little bits and pieces, like something that has a lot of loose pieces, it'll cover lots of bits of surface area and that will pop up when you hit the drum. That's pretty much the essentials there. And if you can do that, you're squared away and you have your gate set up. So you can hit your drum, hear all the full tone and the richness and then the gate closes, done. Remember that our goal is to preserve all of the tone from the drum. We wanna preserve all the tone and just shorten the ringing. We don't wanna cut out the ringing. We don't wanna cut out the tone. We just want to shorten it. That way it's all still there. Because if you spend $600, $1,000 on a great snare drum, you don't really wanna choke it out. 
because what makes that drum great is actually the musical musicality of its ringing. And that's what's interesting, and usually that's the difference between a really nice drum and a cheap drum. The nice drum will have a more musical ring as you tune higher, and the ring becomes less annoying very quickly, even once you get to a medium tuning. That's what I've noticed with the Gretsch drum. This cheaper PDP drum, it tends to stay kind of ringy, and so I don't like it so much at the higher tunings because the ring is just not pleasant as I tune up. There's always gonna be the ring down low, but I get rid of it with this, so it works. The snare is great for this. But the Gretsch snare, it has a more pleasing ring that's not annoying. Now, it's still, a, it sounds kind of like this when I tune it low, but as I tune it up, that ringing becomes more complex and really nice, and so that has a lot to do with the shell and the wood type and all those things. So when you've got a nicer drum, you're gonna succeed a lot with that first method of tuning higher to get rid of the ringiness. And th that's, you know, nicer drums are more versatile. You get that versatility, that's what you're paying for. But what's cool is that this kind of levels the playing field. If you've got a cheap drum, you can use something like this and it's gonna help that cheap drum really work well. And so if you optimize your tuning for what you want, tune a little higher if you need to, uh, find your metallic object to put on here, hit the drum in the center, you're gonna be able to make any cheap snare drum sound significantly better. So go out there, retune your snare if you need to, find a metallic object, practice your consistency. You're gonna be getting a great pro sound out of your snare drum, whether it is a $50 used snare or a $1,000 snare. Hey, I've got a question for you as we wrap up. And actually, real quick, I gotta play devil's advocate here. <laughs> as, we, as we wrap up this whole discussion, I want you to go listen to John Mayer's Live in LA record. It's one of my favorite live records. I always talk about it because uh, it's great. Great musicianship. Listen to Steve Jordan slash J.J. Johnson's drum. Those are the two drummers that play on this record, Steve Jordan, J.J. Johnson. And there's a particular deep snare that they both use in a couple of the tunes on the record. S specifically, listen to I Can't Trust Myself with Loving You from that record. Um, at the beginning, there's kind of this jam on a higher tuned snare, but then when they actually kick into the song, about a minute and a half or so into the track, he plays this fill, and goes into this really slow pocket groove that feels so great with a super deep snare. You can hear right there on the record how much ringing there is, and it's very interesting to me that the ring is there. Like, he doesn't have something like this on it to choke it out. It's ringing. Like, it's a natural ringing snare drum. The real, I'm sure it's a really great, really nice snare. And so that ringiness works well, it's very musical, but it's there. And what's interesting is that it doesn't really bother me because it kind of gets lost in the mix. And especially once all the other musicians are going and the bass comes in, you don't notice it, it's not that big of a deal. So that's kind of devil's advocate thing here I gotta play. I know we're talking about shortening the ring so we don't have a low ringy drum, but know that there are records out there with great drummers playing really nice drums, Everything's very well recorded, well mixed, and there's ringiness coming from the snare drum, but it gets buried by the other instruments going on and it's not obnoxious. So keep that in mind that I, it's very probable that your snare ringiness is not actually as bad as you think it is. Okay, as we wrap up, which of these three methods is your favorite? Well, I know which is my favorite, so maybe the better question is which have you tried before? Have you tried solving ringiness with tuning? Have you tried becoming more precise? Have you tried something like this? Let me know, let's get a discussion going. This is really interesting stuff. And I know this can be somewhat controversial too. Anytime I make a lesson about tuning, everybody's got an opinion. So, hey, that's what the comment section is for. Share your opinion, let me know what you're thinking. Let's talk about snare tuning. As always, thanks so much for hanging out today. This has been a lot of fun. I hope this has been a helpful and valuable lesson to you. Be sure to grab that e-guide that I mentioned earlier, the 25 practical rock grooves and fills for the beginner drummer. If you're a beginner player, and you need to build up that basic vocabulary so that you can quickly start assembling songs, know what to practice, and be able to play your favorite songs quickly and get up and running. That is the guide for you. Go grab that in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next lesson. Remember that you can do this. You can do this. You can master the drums, and you can get a snare sound that you love and that inspires you. Stay non-glamorous. I'll see you next time.